We have examined the elder brother, so allow us to take a look at the second prince. What's up guys, all Pencil again here, we want to do a nice little breakdown slash discussion and review of Versus Battle Wiki's take on Zeldalisa, the second prince of the demon world and the new demon king at the time of Four Nights of the Umbabalaba. And I'm quite excited, quite excited. So far, Versus Battle Wiki, it's been, it's been taking hammers to my ankles in terms of me being impressed with how much it's updated, how fast characters in Seven Nights Sins are now being considered, how strong they are, everything's been getting exciting. And I'm very interested to see how they handle Zeldris in particular. Zeldris is a contentious character, I think we have to put it lightly. He's a pretty contentious character to scale, just because of the vagueness around a lot of stuff, and novel statements, and lack thereof of novel statements, where the novel statements matter all too. Like, there's so many things that go into Zeldris that, heck, even I'm not fully confident on where to scale him, in my opinion. That's why I haven't updated how strong is Zeldris, despite that being mad outdated by the time at this point. So I'm very, very excited to take a look in a book, Reading Rainbow. So let's not waste any more time, and let's hop right into it. Editing me. Ready? Three, two, one, go. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. Fun fact, I do happen to have it on me and keep it on me at all times. And another fun fact. Man, this is some quality artwork, bro. Like, this man just like, ah, he looks scrumdily umptious. Bro looks delicious, juicy. Oop, it's too late now. We are not going to see what Second Demon War looks like to save my life because I'm currently doing everything in my power to make sure that this bad boy does not yell at the top of his lungs. So Second Demon War don't even matter for real, for real. Let's be completely real. This owner is just him. Interesting there's no on Well, I guess, like, I swear, though, maybe I'm tweaking. Though. I could have sworn they had an ominous nebula key. It doesn't really matter, because, like, typically, ominous nebula is just an ability. And, like, it's never, I mean, it's never necessarily stated to amp him, like, anything. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure there was an ominous nebula key, but I may just be misremembering that. But they got base and second demon mark. No, no King Zell. But then again, I can't blame them for no King Zell, because Zell doesn't fight anybody in Fortnite. Like there's like there's nothing you can really do for Fortnite Zell unless it's like implications, like oh the demon world is still in one piece, meaning Zell must be some sort of threat on his own, because Gelda clearly isn't, and clearly the Six Knights of Black aren't either. They aren't even commandment level, and you got Arthur throwing out chaos commandment tears like they're nothing. So like, interesting, intriguing, intriguing, intriguing. Let's see. Let's take a look at Zelda this. <laughs> Summary. Zeldris is known as Zeldris the Piety. Zeldris, also known as Zeldris the Piety, is Meliodas' younger brother and one of the Ten Commandments that answer directly to the Demon King. He was granted the commandment of Piety, as responsible for the ransacking of Camelot and the enslavement of its citizens, as well as the denizens of Leonis. Accurate. Okay, so this is... I don't know. Let me, see, let me actually check this before I go into determining which Zeldris this is. Admittedly, I'm kind of still in the camp that Piety plus DKP... Plus, regular stats is best Zeldris. Like, you can make arguments that later variations are stronger, especially if you go with implications from Four Knights and what he should be at for, like, narrative implications and, like, you know, like, the demon world being around still. I don't know. It's kind of... It's kind of tricky. It's kind of tricky trying to scale Four Knights because he doesn't... He just doesn't fight anybody. And unlike someone like Hauser who got a statement and really a sad statement, like... <laughs> I was being Patronal levels. What? But like, outside of characters like Hauser, who's gotten statements outside the narrative, or characters like Meliodas, who have had battles in the narrative, Zeldris is kind of—he just sits around and stands around for a lot of the demon world. He doesn't really do anything. So you kind of just have to go with Curse by Light scaling, unless you want to make assumptions. But you know what they say about assumptions? Don't make them. But <laughs> let's see. Hi, six C. I have. No, I still need. I need to learn what these numbers and letters are. I feel like I'm back in algebra all over again because I have no idea what these things mean. Hi, six C. I think that's island level. I want to say island. I think there's a lowest you can take, Zeldris. Unlike um a lot of the beginning of series sins, there's no like even. I mean, base Zeldris maybe, but like base Zeldris didn't even listen here. Well, actually, base. It, they just consider base first stage even mark, even though there is such thing as a base Zeldris. But like. I don't think there's lower you can take him than Island. If you're gonna, if you're gonna really go, because he's he just easily, even in base, clears the entire first season, and Galland, and like numerous characters, even in just first stage demon marks. I'm assuming six C is that, at least six B with God, and up to high six B with magic imbued weaponry. Hmm, ten times multiplier. High six B with Omnis Nebula. Okay, 
higher at night, yeah, because the doubling at low, at most, at most, low six B up to six B with gun, up to six A with magic and beauty weapon. Oh, up to six A. Ooh, interesting. At least high six B with omnistimula, higher at night. I wonder what these are for though. Omnistimula, higher at night. At least 6B higher with the marks up to at least 6A with Magic and Beauty Reprie higher at night. Yeah, interesting. So, okay, so here are the tabs base, demon mark, and large, de oh, base slash demon mark, and large demon mark, cursed by light. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. So that's a hint. That's a hint. That's a hint of where they're going to put them. I forget what high 6A is. But I'm just going to Let's see. I don't think that's continental. Is it maybe? I forget. What is 6C? 6C's island, then country, maybe continental. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look. Name, Zeldris. Origin, Nanatsu no Taizai. Gender, male. Age, over 3,000 years old. 252 biologically. I think now, since the demon world and the main timeline run on parallel time axes, aka they, they run along the same time flow, I think Zeldris is now 268? 68, is that right? It's in 18 year time skip now. So he's 200, he's 270 now. He's 270 now because of the 18 year time skip. Let's see. Classification, demon. The commandment of piety, demon king's representative, executioner, new king of the demon world. So yeah, so they don't, and I don't blame, once again, like I mentioned before, they don't have four knights L, like they had four knights Mel. I think, no, they didn't have four knights Diane. But Diane hasn't appeared, and Zeldris, when he did appear, did nothing. So, like, I can't even blame them for not even bothering to try and do anything with Fortnite Cell. That is all speculation. Let's see the powers and abilities. Superhuman physical characteristics. Yep. Longevity. Elite demons live for a thousand years. Probably longer in Zell's case, but yeah, that makes sense. Self-sustenance type 2. I guess. I think. I don't remember. But let's see. Magic. Yep. Extrasensory perception. Yep. Body control. Yeah, I guess, in a way, with the regeneration. Expert swordsmanship, yep. High-ranking demon physiology, yep. Curse negation, Gallon implied that he could reverse the petrification effects with his own commandment. That's interesting. I forget if it's with his own commandment or if it's the Demon King's power. We never get that clarified. But I don't... Is the Demon King's power even introduced as a mechanic by that point? Because, like, one of the weirdest things, and it's one of the reasons you can tell Nakama doesn't necessarily plan things out too in advance, like, for some reason, Zeldris takes even a lick, a modicum of damage from Ludashell's massive arc beam. If you remember when Ludashell first possessed Margaret, and he was just like... <laughs> and just fired off a massive light beam at Zell. If the Demon King's power was like an actual registered thing there, then, presumably, it would have done no damage. It would have just bounced off. And I can't even, like... Notably, you may be able to argue, well, maybe he didn't have it up. He was literally talking to Merlin, the daughter of Belialuin. The woman who's known for one thing, and that's her magical prowess. So, for him not having Demon King's power up, if Nakaba knew what it was at that point, which he may not have, makes no sense. In context of the universe at the time. Especially since he literally says, I'm on guard. Don't you dare try anything. Why would he not have the Demon King's power up? So, I genuinely think he doesn't know about it at that point. So, maybe the implication at that time is that it's commandment-based. Because I'm trying to think, when in the timeline does it happen when Galen makes that thought? It's when Esterosa has gone out. But I think Galen is the first commandment that Esterosa retrieves. So I think, yeah, maybe this is a point where Nagamon just hadn't thought of it yet. And thusly, it may have been with the commandment. But yeah, you could easily, you could just as easily argue, essentially, that it was the Demon King's power. That is what G Galen was so confident in. But at the same time, it may not have been invented yet, so it probably was the commandment. So let's see. Limited instinctive reaction via Ominous Nebula. Yeah, yeah. I mean, t technically, Ominous Nebula isn't even really any form of instinctive reaction. It's kind of just like... It's like Baby Don Maku in the sense that it's consistently swirling around you. So Zeldris himself doesn't actually really need to attack. Every single time he makes those motions... Like, it doesn't make sense in universe. Because, like, it's just the darkness attacking, right? Like, what it, what is swinging the blade out at all really going to do? Nothing. But it looks cool. And that's more than enough. But let's say... Telepathy, yep. Air manipulation and force field creation with Omnis Nebula, yep. Creates a vacuum. I guess, yeah, technically Omnis Nebula kind of is a force field, yeah. Rotates Darius at high speed, creating a vortex that draws out this in. Deconstruction with Tyrant Slaughter. I completely forget what that is. Paralysis Inducement with Omnis Bind, yep. Omnis Bind. I think. 
Oh, yeah, I remember. Damaku generated numerous slashes. Yep, that's Omnis Nebula, essentially. My manipulation, those who flee from Zeldris become his servants. Yep, that's the piety. Non-physical interaction can interact with souls. Correct. Social manipulation broke Dub's wallless space. That is true. I always forget about that. Oh, I always do. Huh. I, I completely forget. And that may mean you don't even need... You may not even need DKP Zell to solo Jutsu Kaisen. Now I think about it. Because, like, one of the biggest things, right? And I've been thinking of this battle for a while, and I'm probably going to do it. I just want to I want to draw numerous images for that, so it's going to take a hot minute. But a battle I've been itching to do is Zelda versus Jujutsu Kaisen, very specifically because of the Demon King's power, and obviously the stat difference, just to show, like, oh, wow, look at the, look at the cliffing level that a character who may be able to be argued to not even be, at this point now, with four knights and a lack of any stated or hinted at amps for Zell. A character who, if you were to take total summation of characters, especially they're adding variations of characters, a character who may not even be top 15 in the verse is still able to solo the entire Yusuke Kaisen verse. It's meant to be like a whole thing on power cliffing. I'm still going to do it. But that's one of the things. I was like, oh, well, Infinity is annoying. So just give him DKP. Make it Prime Zell. But at the same time, if he can just cut through space, we know space manipulation gets the limitless stuff out of here. So, hmm, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Space manipulation... Rage power. Cut down my element of rage. Yep. Curse manipulation. Correct. He does, in fact, have that. Electricity manipulation. Ola. Fear manipulation. The commandments or is terrified Hendrickson. His aura terrified the souls of Excalibur. Yeah, that's true. Power absorption. Can it absorb others' commandments, which are demonic curses? Yeah, and it's unfortunately, it's only that power. I do wish the kids had kind of like a passive power absorption thing. It would make... It would make some things way more interesting. But at the same time, I understand. They're already powerful enough as it is, especially in the case of Meliodas. If you were to actually get, like, consistent general absorption... We got, We got. But let's see. Power nullification can seal the magic of others. Correct. Superior to two commandments, Esterosa. Yeah. Yeah. Resistance to acid manipulation. Hendrickson say that acid doesn't work on the demon clan. Correct. Existence ratio. High level demons can withstand the goddess arc. Oh, okay. So we're, we're bleeding into the resistances now. Yeah, that is, a, that is a thing that does happen. Which is so funny when you think about it. Like, I wonder if Nagabe even realized what he did by saying what he said about <laughs> about the goddess class because like that's such a massive buff that doesn't happen unless you go with the q i mean i guess you could argue it's implied somewhat in narrative that it erases souls but like existence erasure from the goddess clan really comes from that statement by nakama hey what happens with the soul if someone gets hit with art oh it erases them down to the fundamental level he doesn't say all that but he says it just completely erases them so existence erasure being a thing that goddesses can do it's something that's so glazed over that you almost forget at the same time it kind of does make sense because remember what happened to tarmil and sario when they got hit by arc which they should resist as goddesses they still got annihilated but then again presumably they're going to reincarnate so maybe not who knows maybe the grace provides some sort of immunity but let's see Corrosion, inducement, mind manipulation. Demon was completed. Yep. All this is resistances. Deconstruction. Yep. What? Heat manipulation. Oh, I once again, I, I keep getting, like, my brain keeps switching back and forth. It's like, what you mean heat manipulation? <laughs> I mean, I guess, legally speaking, he does have Hellblade. So, I guess that should technically be a list here. Let's see. Mind manipulation. Heat manipulation. Excuse attack attack, negation. Curse, Merlin. Ah, Yep, despite her resistance. That is correct. That is correct. Uh, yeah, I don't see a mention of Hellblaze on here, but that's fine. That's fine. I'm assuming it's under the in the ability section. So let's see. Now you're getting to the... Oh. Oh. Oh, my. So we're getting to some ish in here. Sound very, very, very interesting. What do you think? I'm genuinely considering. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I took a quick glance through all of it. Large island level at base. Should be in the same range of power as base until Meliodas or Galland. Well, I guess if you're talking base, 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 base. I guess, yeah. I'm about to say, wait a minute. <laughs> like, what? We're talking Team Mark Zell's at the same tier as Galland? Base post Druid Mel? Like, really? But no, no, no. In the general, in the general scheme of things, yeah, I can definitely, I can definitely see that. It's just for base, base, base. Small country level demon mark has a physical strength nearly on par with Derriere and much higher than Joel. Interesting. 
Once again, I, I'm wondering, I'm going to have to check that. What what feats are we getting this from, though? What feats are we getting large island level, country level? Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. I'm not complaining. You know, your boy is definitely not going to complain. But I'm wondering, because I haven't, in the ones I've done so far, I haven't seen a reason for the leap. Like, the first, like, city level stuff comes from calcs of what Diane does and stuff like that. But... Currently, I'm actually really interested to see where they get this. I mean, it's just straight up a multiplier thing, which is somewhat implied. Let's see. Clash with Bushaluda Show, though he seemed to be at a disadvantage. Seemed to be. Oh, no, I wrote that disadvantage. Let's see. At least a large country level with magic imbued weaponry. Yeah, just multiplying it by 10. Can imbue weaponry with the power of darkness, which is a form of destroyer magic that enhances the power of a weapon nearly tenfold. Yep. 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 Hallelujah. Though, okay, Nakaba, I'm happy, bro. I'm ha I'm super happy you just laid it on the table. You gave us the car facts. You told us how much of a multiplier is. I need it for everything else. Not everything else, just the sacred treasures. How much? How how juicy? How jacked and juicy of an amp is it? Let me know, Nakaba. Let me know how much. Because it's so vague. And, like, here's the thing. There's, there's no winning, right? Because either it's too, way too small in some people's eyes or it's way too big. If you take king at face value, the multiplier is insane. Just to look up how many cups can fit into a lake. That's the multiplier <laughs> for a sacred treasure according to king. But at the same time, he looks up a smaller bubble and says something similar. So, uh, it's a, it's a It's a rough, it's a rough, rough, rough thing. But interesting, interesting. Let's see. Large country low with Omnis Nebula. Half as strong as his enlarged mark. Huh, okay. Completely overwhelmed near noon, Escanor, and Ludashell. Yep, that's true. Higher at night, magic power of demons increases at night. I think in some translation it says doubles, but like I think in the officials it literally just says increases. And even then, once you return, Chandler isn't... Ch Chandler? <laughs> Lord. Once you return, Chandler isn't there. To clarify things. Why did I say return? I have been playing way too much Hollow Knight. Where's my brain at? <laughs> I said return as if he was like an NPC you could come back to. No. But it's like we only see him say your power increases in the officials. In the original translations, it says doubles. But we don't get that quantification or clarification. But interesting, interesting. All right, large country level up to, yeah. I think they should mention, but they have Curse by Light here listed as a key, so I think they should mention that. Like, I get kind of what, like, it really depends. If you take that novel statement, and you just give Zeldris no credit at all, and you're like, eh, you know, he's probably not as strong as Mel, Mel probably contributed more, and they got an amp to slice the Supreme Deity down, meaning the best you could take Zeldris is like a fourth of the Supreme Deity's power, and then that's just about where he was before. Not a fourth, but a fourth of half of her power, which would be an eighth. So it gets like, it's a little teeny tiny, any bitty bit tragic, but at the same time, you can just argue that one... He still needs a swinging force. He needs to be able to keep up with Meliodas. He's implied to be on Meliodas' level. It's just that he was holding back on Dahlia when they fought because he doesn't seem too unconfident in fighting Dahlia again. Like, notably, there are numbers, but... Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. I'd personally give him at least some skill in the Supreme Deity. If I, if I had to say so myself, I'd give some to him. But I understand why not. But let's see. The power of demons increases at night. Speed sub relativistic. At least sub relativistic plus with demon mark. Up to rel relativistic plus with God. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Sub relativistic does make sense, though. At least sub relativistic plus with demon marks. Up to relativistic plus with God. Nearly nearly comparable to Flash. Where as fat and as. And how? What? Nearly comparable to Flash and have as fast as in large demon mark. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, because they just double two time multiplier. FTL with Ominous Nebula. Interesting. Your new Escanor and Ludashell is confirmed to be superior to Fly. Okay, okay. So, I'm assuming, I'm assuming they get a lot of the relativistic, to sub relativistic, to FTL or light speed stuff is based off Ludashell. There is, it's not in the manga, I don't believe. I think it is an external statement where Nakaba just confirms Flash allows the wielder to move at the speed of light. Numerous characters either are Ludashell tier, above Ludashell's tier, if not on his level, they react to Ludashell. A bunch of characters should have that feel. So unlike the attack potency, where I'm still not exactly sure where they're getting island level to country level, I just don't know. I legit don't know what feat they're taking from to get that. I can I can take a pretty solid guess. <laughs> I can definitely take a look. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Okay, I see the I see the keys now. I see the keys. I know what must be done. I know what must be done, Batman. 
I see the vision. I see the vision. All right, let me take a look in a book reading Rainbow. Though, admittedly, this may just be nerfs. This may just be some hefty, defty nerfs once I click on these other keys. But let me see. Relativistic hardwood theme marks up to FTL with God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I managed to outspeed, evade and outspeed even Mayel, who could keep it with his combat speed. Correct, correct, makes sense. And, you know, Mayel's strongest archangel, stuff like that. FTL with demon marks, comparable to Meliodas. Ah, oh, hmm. Which Meliodas? Comparable, how? Interesting, interesting, interesting. Comparable to Meliodas. Let's see enlarge demon mark. Anything change here? At most, small country level plus multiplies his power. Up to country level, ah, Fought Afternoon Mael, heavily injured. Okay. So probably referring to Piety lists. Then again, a lot of Zildas is up to Continental with Magic of Beauty Weaponry. I'm assuming... Then again, that's just Enlarged Demar. That doesn't say Curse by Light. They have a separate tab for Curse by Light. Interesting. Held back. And what? At large island, at large country level, I'm to held back the one Eskimo for a considerable amount of time before he's overpowered. He even managed to scratch the lattice wrist. That's correct. Higher at night. Oh, interesting. Hmm. At, why does it say at most country level? Small country level, though. Like, I get... What is they? What are they referring to? Like, the basics basics of it? Lord? That's interesting. That's interesting. Curse by Light. At least large country level. Higher with the mark. Comparable to Meliodas. And assisted him in defeating the Supreme Deity. After enlarging his demon mark, he easily stomped, stomped Dubs, who was comparable to Meliodas' regular demon mark, and casually one-shot an Endura. Hmm. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Okay. Oh, yeah. At least at this continental level with magic imbued weaponry, enhances power nearly tenfold, broke the Supreme Deity's barrier, and severely damaged all of Interesting, interesting. I'm I'm very hard pressed to say Meliodas is comparable to Zeldris by the time of Cursed by Light. Because notably only six months have passed. You'd have to make you'd have to make the argument I always make for like Zeldris and Mel being stronger than their original prime cells, and the idea that you'd have to be like, oh, well, I guess you can make the argument that one, they are shown mostly relative for the most part. In portrayal, and you know, Zeldris, his body was amped to like beyond regular 50% Demon King levels, up to prime Demon King tier, and his body may remember that. That's the kind of argument you'd have to make, but I'm fine with that. I can find with them being comparable. I can definitely see the comparison with dubs, and obviously, the one shotting the Endura. If you just assume the basics, like Endura, actually, since the Endura looked exactly like Boruha's Endura, though I don't, I forget if it's confirmed if that's Boruha or not. The one that got one shot in Crush by Light, I forget. They share the exact same design. Which is another reason why... But then again, I think that's just, like, what Endura may end up looking like. Because Baruha doesn't look anything like... Unlike Munspeed and Derriere, we can still sort of recognize the base demon. Baruha's actual design that was revealed in Grand Cross versus the Endura design that he turned into... That not look anything alike. Like, no, nowhere near comparison. But yeah, I always forget about that. Endura getting one shot by Dubs. Dubs being... Yeah, so, so I can rock with that. I can rock with that. And it looks like they don't even... Yeah, so being able to damage the Supreme Deity also makes sense. That'll be stuff. That'll be stuff. So relativistic FTLD marks in purple. Yeah, okay. So this piece stuff makes sense. Everything... So, you know what? That'll be stuff. Lifting strength? Don't know. So striking strength? Yep, everything's going to be comparable. Durability? Durability equals attack potency? Yep, stamina superhuman? Yeah, unfortunately, Zelda doesn't really have any like crazy feats or crazy statement like he doesn't have like the 112 year fight that Meliodas and Bond have in Purgatory he doesn't have the 60 year training art with the Demon King and even then you can argue the 60 years isn't consistent like you there there are definitely feats that he's very powerful he has great endurance in the sense that he ran a crazy gauntlet like, against some of the strongest characters in the verse at the time. But at the same time, there's nothing to imply that he has, like, anything super-duper crazy. Range extended melee range. Tens of kilometers of the tax. Yep. Because of, um... I believe... Diasade. Standard equipment. Short sword. Yep. Range. Intelligence genius. Zeldris has shown himself to be highly skilled, analytical, and a calm fighter. He also has shown knowledge of various human fighting styles and techniques. That's true. For some reason, he knows all the... I guess because it was talked about. But he immediately recognizes... Like, the names and fighting styles of the human kings. Which he notes. Like, a big thing that Chandler notes. I believe it's Chandler or Cusack. They note about Excalibur. Oh, yeah. Like, it's cool and all. Those things were terrors to lesser demons. But not people like us, for real, for real. Which implies that Zeldris, nor Mel, nor Cusack, nor Chandler ever actually ran into any of the human kings that developed these crazy sword fighting styles. Which means that Zeldris just recognized them off-site. 
and like from stories because like there's video or anything he just recognizes them off story so yeah genius makes sense weaknesses all demons are vulnerable holy magic breaks down darkness particles note however high level demons have shown particularly minor damage breaks in their own level implying vulnerability is not extreme yep and if you're using piety's elders arctis doesn't work <laughs> light light based attacks just don't work let's see notable attacks like techniques demon is is the highest level of demon and can access demonic biology and powers to give himself a boost in physical ability and various other advantages note that Zelda always has his demon mark activated yep that's true there i think we've seen base elders like twice i think we see him for a glimpse in cursed by light i think we see him for a hot second in the demon king not in the demon king but kind of in the demon king when he's locked away by the demon king in his own body that's also another sighting of base cell but that's about it like bro bro is super duper rare for for being something that exists, right? He's super duper. A lot of demons are rarely seen in their base states. Like, I think we only see base derriere for like two seconds. I mean, if we ever even see base mon speed. So yeah, that makes sense. Demon. So this is the highest level of demon. It can access various... <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm going to keep... No, I'm going to keep doing it. It can access various demon biology and powers to give himself a physical boost because he's a demon and various other advantages as a demon no zodus has always had his demon mark activated <laughs> and that is power increases yep power of darkness as part of his demonic biology zodus can generate solid darkness from his body which he can manipulate the sh and shape as well as project outward from himself correct amundo he can use his black matter for a variety of offensive defensive and supplementary purposes correct amundo enhance their ability demons can use their black matter as a thin but powerful light of darkness yep flight yep we literally see bro flying let's see self-healing demons can use dark substance to pull their bodies back together men burn injuries etc correct however they cannot regenerate destroyed hearts a very interesting limitation but not very very true and damages with the demon despite the wound being healed correct this means that powerful enough attacks cannot be regenerated by a weaker demon and they eventually run out of it. yep 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 this is similar for all demons versus level case far as I remember demon blood is shown the possessive but yeah potent regenerative abilities is true yep fraudulent to dreyfus and notably that's demonic blood being filtered through human blood which is crazy to think about like Henriksen was half a man, like like in the literal sense, like his whole lower body was vaporized by the release, was it the release? No, 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 it was by, remember, post-revenge counter, all of Dreyfus's, not Dreyfus's, all of Henriksen's lower body was gone. He took a little sip of that demon lean and suddenly he was way back, he was like fully back to normal. It's like the only healing thing we see demons do though, and I'm not sure if that's like human specific. Or if you can scale that to, like, all demons. Like, presumably you should be able to, right? Like, if a random human was able to heal slightly, or not heal slightly, heal their whole lower body off of just a few drops of that demon lean, then, like, presumably all demons should just be able to regrow their lower halves? Or at least demons of commandments here and higher. Like, just characters stronger than Fraudrin. But unfortunately, we just never see that. We never see any demons specifically, like, lose their lower half and then just regenerate it. So, it's hard to say, but I can understand why people use that. Weapon creation, yep. Sensing, high level, yep. Soul extraction, absorption, can extract souls. That is correct amundo. Correct amungo. In correct amungo. Indeed. Actually, let me see what the second image is. What do they use here for second demon mark? Let me take a look in a book. Reading ring. You're going to do this to me, Batman? How dare you, Batman? It's not, it's not showing me. Show me. Oh. Oh, that's nice. I like that fan art. W fan art. W fan art. We like that. We like that. We like that. Scrum really umptious. Scrum really umptious. Well, let's see. Extended power of darkness. Weapon creation. Sensing. Soul extraction. Yep, that is correct. Amundo. Telepathy. Project his thoughts over Britannia. That is correct. Commandment. All right, so yep. Piety. Anyone who turns their back on Zelda will be treated as like, an act of treachery against them, forcing them to be against to the Demon King by extension of himself. As the, yeah, this is honestly like... It's a really, really good ability for how rarely it's used. Like, don't we, we never see it used in combat, mainly because Zeldris, he doesn't really fight anybody. That's the thing. Zeldris doesn't really fight anybody before he's already lost the piety in particular. He sees the Demon King's power for a hot minute. Like, he, I think he only, he loses it, like, post 300s, and then the series only goes on for 40 chapters after that, and Zeldris is only part of the series for, like, 20 more chapters after he loses the Demon King's power. But, like, for piety... It's only used in this one sense, but it's still a very good ability. Like, think of any time you would turn your back to somebody in the midst of a battle. Bada bing, bada boom, piety. Let's see. Abilities, admonition, yep, commandments, extraction, curse infliction, those can induce curses on victims with his hellblaze attack. Okay, so they do have hellblaze. 
Merlin fell into a coma and her mind was engulfed in what Elizabeth would describe as a sea of blackness. Zoltus maintains a link to the cursed victim, appearing in their mind to stop those who would heal him from the curse. Which is still crazy. Like, he just does this. And it was never mentioned again. Nagab is, he's a very big fan of one-off powers. In terms of, like, he'll just, he'll be like, hey, guess what? Boom. And we'll be like, huh? And then he'll be like, bye. You'll never see it again. This is one of them. Brodus randomly induces, and this seems to be unique to him. Like, this doesn't even seem like something you can apply to, like, piety or the Demon King's power. No, this is fully unique. Like, the magic ceiling, that's pretty much attributed to the Demon King's power. Though, then again, was it invented at that point? I'm not sure. Maybe that is just something that Eldritch can just genuinely do. He can just seal magic. We know he can seal other things, but magic, I always feel like that's a DKP-specific thing. Then again, there's the whole issue with Luda Show, which happens way later in the timeline than when we see Zelda seal Droll's magic, even though that's technically way early in the timeline because it's during a flashback arc. Eh, weird. Let's see. Berlin in a coma? Yeah, it's a crazy thing. DS already translated to Day of Wrath? Yeah, but okay, this is it. Raises his sword into the air, creating a portal over his target that brings in a massive dark colored lightning bolt. Once again, another one off ability that we just never see him use again, and notably when he uses it on Ludashell, it doesn't even work. Because Ludashell just blocks it. So, so a crazy ability, we just never see it used properly, or used on someone who can actually take damage from it. God. Zelda's magic power. Whoa! <laughs> I call it the Demon King's power. It's. I think it is called the God in the officials too, but I forget. Given to them by the Demon King. He used to seal up his magic. Okay, so so yeah. So even versus the wiki assumes it's to seal up the people's magic. That makes sense. That makes sense. That's what I assume. I would assume it's this. But like the maybe the Demon King's power is just meant to be magic sealing, and then it turned into magic negation later on. I don't know. The Ludashell thing is still so weird. It's been implied that using it makes him much more powerful than he is normally. It's true. This power allows him to be resistant to all types of magic and remain virtually untouched by them. He just turns them off. Like it's to the point where characters who should be stronger than Zeldris still can't do any damage to him. Like, remember, the Demon King's Summit, I forget what it was called, Something of Sorrows, it, like, just couldn't damage Zeldris. Despite being dangerous to, like, very, very high-level characters, Zeldris just stole straight on those attacks like nothing. And that's a character, from a character who's confirmed much stronger than Zeldris. But then again, he did, like, one-tap the Hermit of Moments. So who knows? Maybe that thing wasn't actually as strong. But still, it is very impressive that that just turns off all magical abilities, passive or active. Let's see. Hellblaze. Zeldris can generate black purgatory fire of the demon clan capable of nullifying the regeneration of worlds like Bond. Correct. Hellblaze can be coated on Zeldris' body or weapon to reinforce his strike. Correct. He can generate large massive area effect explosions, which is used to destroy Stigma's Light of Grace. Correct. He can also shoot blasts of fire from his hands, which is used to attack Merlin through a viewing gem. Which is also crazy. Like, I don't know how that worked either. Like, bro somehow lit Merlin up through Orlandi, though I think it may have to, like, maybe you can argue she accidentally teleports some of the fire back and they attempt to just get Orlandi, but still, it's weird. It's completely weird how he's just able to, and then somehow she burned him, or he got burned by him anyway. Let's see. The black fire cannot put out normally. Yep, Ominous Nebula, the most underwhelming demon ability in the entire series. It's a technique with extreme concentration where Zeldra rotates his darkness around at immense speeds, creating a vortex that surrounds him and attracts all living beings around him. This power makes... The airflow, well, yeah, it makes the airflow and create vacuum, and everything that comes in contact with it is sliced at godlike speed by pure reflexes, making this attack a full react. But it's still weird, it's still very, very, I always like, it's just the darkness, right? I don't know, I, I need to reread. I'm gonna do an honest nebula. I have so many explained videos scripted, but not only do I need to sit down and record them, they are also a pain to edit. A nightmare to add it. And also, I'm trying to figure out how to do those with my new style. When I did explain videos before, I just put panels on screen. But I like this new style that I do. But I'm not sure how to do that for an explained video in particular. I'm still trying to figure that out. But yeah, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to double check on this study. But that, that makes sense. Even Ludashell, leader of the four archangels, states that the speed of his techniques far surpass, well, surpasses his grace flash. Very, very true. Endure transformation. Yep, we'll never see it though. Never, ever, ever, presumably. And sealing. Yep, seal the vampire. Ah! Go away! But, alright, alright. So, I'll admit, I'll admit. Ooh. Ooh, they had him beat Julius? I may have to break that down. Would y'all be interested in me breaking down, like, versus Battle Threads? I don't know, I feel like that would take longer. But still, all right, very, very interesting. So, 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 into Marestin, into Marestin. Yeah, I'd say very, very Ws. Once again, I'm gonna, I'll do this before the next video, because I just want to know at this point. Now, now, it's like, it's getting so vague that I'm generally interested in seeing it. I think I just assumed it was Tarmiel, but I want to see where is this coming from? Where, where is, where is the leap? Where is the island level to country level? Like, where is it? 
where the Carfax. I want to know where they get that from. But it's not even the system that's bad. It makes sense. Once again, I'm obviously in a much higher camp. I'm not to the insane. I, well, not insane. I'm not to the ultimate level camp where it's like I'm thinking characters are multiple characters are universal. But like I'm leaning towards the moon, planetary stuff like that. And you can definitely make arguments that Zelda should reasonably reach that tier by Curse by Light. If you just go with low-end characters, seemingly enough reaching that tier, presumably characters like Diane, who Zelda should definitely still be stronger than. And if you think Zell by Four Nights is Demon King level, like, moon, like there are definitely things you can make. Like, he should be at least multi-continental, but hey, you know what? I'll take Continent Plus. I'll take Continent Plus. I'm splitting the feet with Meliodas, all this stuff like that on the Supreme Deity. Yeah, very good stuff. There I say. It's worthy. However, that's what I think. Please what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave the deadly darkness in the comment section down below. I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure that notification bell so you do not miss out on any of those that come to the channel. Also, also, I do happen to have a Patreon below where you can support me for as low as one, get them one, double, get things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also want to become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks will include the live reactions to the very next chapter of Four Nights of the Apocalypse, and also add free variations of all my videos. Now, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is the back of the pencil, writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to Art3 Dollar members, Recliner Plays, Red Bull 4765, Greyhound, and Atkins Void. I'd like to give another big thank you to our $5 dollar patrons, Victor, Sean, RNG Master, Midnight Gemlord, Metal Solid Crisis, Kevin, Igneal, and Demix LND. And another scrumptious thank you to our $7 members, Autumn, Mornings, Lazo, and Sick Addiction. And I'd like to give another hefty thank you to our $10 patrons, Robbie Uchiha, Joaquin, Idemokami, and China Doll 9 and I'd like to give a another gargantuan thank you to our $25 member, Alex Ice Rose. And I'd like to give a thank you, an amazing thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder. And another thank you to our next $25 patron, Ehack1. And a final, final thank you to our final $25 patron, Steeron.